Good evening, everybody. It is, uh, today is the 13th of July, and um, we are live with the topic, and the topic tonight is topic number 124, topic number 124, Battle of Seed, and uh, the topic is Battle of Seed. Good evening, I can see there's some people coming online, and <laughs> yeah, it's always lucky when you see people coming online, because that means that I'm actually live. So tonight, Battle of Seed, and if we talk about Battle of Seed, we know that it's, it's all about... Um, it's all about uh, the battle of the seed of the enemy versus versus um, uh, the father, the 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 bad versus the good, the eternal father versus the devil. And um, welcome everybody. I uh, said hello. My apology for being two minutes late. I was not able to start my my PowerPoint um, as um, I prepared it. So tonight you'll have to listen fast. Because I have to run through the scriptures. There's lots of scriptures. And um, I don't have a PowerPoint to show you the scriptures. I've uh, done my best to prepare it. But I just for the... Yeah, I just could not open it this very moment. So um, we are on the call. The battle, uh, battle of seed. So we start with the garden. Garden of Gethsemane. The, the garden where God was busy with Adam and Eve. And that's where this battle starts and... From there, we take on this, this battle story. But um, let's start with um, uh, the, the battle of seed. And um, let's go and first just uh, get settled before the Father. Lord, we just come and say thank you for the privilege that we can be together tonight like this on this topic. Topic number 124, battle of seed. Lord, we talk about tonight the battle of your seed to make sure that Jesus Christ happened for every one of us and that that seed is still today in us. And we thank you for that. Lord, we hope that you will settle us in the spirit that we will just take in this word in the, to the best of our ability with the love of God the Father. Amen. So um, let's, let's run. And um, I'm not going to try and get my iPad to, to give me that um, uh, that. Uh, uh, PowerPoint now because that will distract me. So my apology for for not having it. I've prepared the most amazing PowerPoint for you for tonight, but um, I will have to talk to you without that PowerPoint. So, in the beginning, God creates heaven and earth, and by chapter two of Genesis, we read that all the host of them host of them was finished. But on on day six, Lord creates man and places him in the garden. God gives Adam. One rule, and that is not that he's not supposed to eat from the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, because God didn't want them to go test that. Of course, <laughs> man failed, but uh, with the help of the serpent, with the little help of a little serpent, man has failed. So man falls, and God gives, uh, God begins to give the curse to each of the guilty involved in the sin. But when God gets to the serpent, he lays out the blueprint for the future struggle of the coming Savior. The future struggle, the, the blueprint for the future struggle of the coming Savior. And we read in Genesis 3, verse 14 to 15. Genesis 3, verse 14 to 15. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you, and that enmity is a strife, the struggle, the fight, enmity between you and the woman, and between you, your seed and her seed, you shall bruise, she, he shall bruise your head. So between your seed, the seed of the natural man, and the seed of the enemy, the seed of man, which, which will born the, the Savior later, and the enemy, and he shall bruise, and, and you shall bruise his heel. You, Adam and Eve, you and I, we shall bruise his, bruise his heel. Here we read of enmity between the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman. Reference through the Bible, you will find that the serpent is the devil. Example, Revelation 2 verse 19, 
just the A part of Revelations 2 verse, uh, 2 verse 9. My apology, Revelations 12 verse 9. This is the correct scripture. Revelation 12 verse 9. I just read the first part, the A part. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan. We can also find ref reference to that because some people say, but was it really the devil? What, what was it? And here we, it settles it. The scripture just tells us here that it was Satan, the devil. And we read that also in Revelation 20 and verse 2. Again, only the A part. He laid hold of the dragon, the serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan. So maybe you are saying these scriptures do not put him in the garden. These scriptures do not put the devil in the garden. Maybe there was a different, devil was different than the serpent. The serpent. But these scriptures assist us to understand it. Ezekiel 28 and verse 13a. Ezekiel 28 and verse 13. Again, only the A part. You were in Eden, the garden of God. So if we read this in context, we'll find that the word is actually talking of the devil. That serpent was the devil. It's, it's settled. The, sh the word shows us that. And then we can even go further in Ezekiel 28, 14 again, the A part. You were the anointed cherub who covers. So you were the anointed cherub who covers the devil that was thrown out. And he was the, uh, he was the serpent in Eden. So there's no doubt that the, the word is talking about the serpent, the devil, as the serpent in, in, in Eden. Now that we have established that Satan was the serpent in the garden, we can better realize that Genesis 3.15 is predicting. God says that there is going to be war between God's seed and Satan's seed. So God's predicting, telling us that there's going to be war between Satan's seed and, and God's seed, and we, we see that all through the Bible. So let's go look at the first fight of God's seed against Satan's seed. And that's in the story of Cain and Abel. And we read that in Genesis 4, verse 1 to 2. Genesis 4, verse 1 to 2. Now Ada, um, Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. I have acquired a man from the Lord when she conceived um, Cain. Then she bore again, this time his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Notice back in Genesis 4, 1, verse 1 that we just read, where Eve says, I've gotten a man from the Lord. You can say that Eve thought that this was the Redeemer, and maybe she did. Maybe she really thought that this was the Redeemer, the Redeemer but I'm not sure that Eve knew all that we think she knew. Nevertheless, Eve, not God, Eve, not God, says that this man was from the Lord. Henceforth, we have two brothers, and I believe the struggle between the two seeds, Satan will always do his best work from the inside. So we believe that Satan infiltrated Cain because Satan will do his work from the inside. Then we continue reading in Genesis 4, and we read Genesis 4 and verse 3 to 5. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground of the Lord. Abel also brought the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering. But he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was, Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. Automatically, reasons why Cain's sacrifice was not accepted was probably so we always automatically want reasons, isn't it? When we hear something like that, what's the, what's, what's the reason behind it? Why did this work? And we want to reason. That's just human behavior. We want to reason why that happened. And all these things make for good preaching. But we need to be more interested in the truth than what makes for good preaching. Just to give you something else here, possibly this is not the best time to bring fruit to God as an offering. Cain was of th that wicked one brings fruit, which could possibly bring to remembrance that the sin happened in the garden, a possible remembrance. The sin happened in the garden, that's why not the fruit. And then Cain is upset when God does not accept his sacrifice. Cain's heart was not right in the first place, and possibly he brings the sacrifice to spite God. Maybe Cain 
is doing the deeds of his father, John 8 verse 41 and 44, I believe that the devil is making a statement through Cain, maybe exalting himself above God, 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 4, and offering something that was at this time an abomination, Mark 13 verse 4. Do you know what Abel should have done? He should have fled, Mark 13 verse 14 to 16. Amazing how history repeats itself, and we can read that in Ecclesiastics 1 verse 9. And I trust by now you, you heard why I tried to create, create a PowerPoint to show you the scripture so that you can just see it as well and not just hear it, because this is like rapid fire tonight, and uh, we only one-tenth of the time gone, and 15 minutes is gone already. So um, put on your safety belt. So the stage is set for war. War between the seed of God and the seed of Satan. Cain is filled with anger, and the godly seed through Abel is about to be attacked. So Cain, the devil, has got anger, and he's about to attack the godly seed of God through, through Abel. Genesis 4 verse 8. Now Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. The seed of Satan attacked and killed Abel. This seed to be a great victory of the seed of Satan. No Abel means no seed. No Abel means God has got no seed. No one that can bring forth the Redeemer. No one that can come set, set right. So no Abel means no seed, which means no coming Savior, which means to the serpent that his head will not be bruised. However, the Lord knows the end from the beginning. The Lord says, I knew what I was saying in Genesis 3.15, uh, and I will still bruise your head because I have a seed replacing Abel, and this seed replacing the seed of Abel's name is Seth. Let me just get a glass of water because I'm going like a rapid train. Genesis 4.25, and Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son, a name, and a name, his name was Seth. For God has appointed another seed for him instead of Abel, whom Cain killed. God, praise God. The devil attacked, but the Lord was stood and overcome. The devil, however, will not stop here. The devil continues. Then we pick up the story of the battle between the seed, between the seed again in Noah. When uh, we go and read the story of Noah, and we pick this up in Genesis 6 and verse 1 to 8. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw, saw the daughters of men, and they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves for all whom they cho chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. There were giants on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Then the Lord said to the wickedness of the man, Lord said that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Can you see how men are stern, and the thoughts of their heart was continually evil? And that was just so bad for God. And yes, I see Henrietta's talking about the Nephilim, and you're absolutely right. And the Lord was sorry that he made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the earth, from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I've made them. But, and, and uh, Uncle Angus said only always, but God. And yeah, God is, says, but Noah, can we see that we always call out to God, but God. We know when everything is dealt with, there's a but God. And yeah, God chose us and he turns it around and he says to us, but Noah. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Brother, sister, I want to encourage you with this. We should be like Noah for God to find grace for us in his eyes. But Noah, once again, we read of an attack by the seed of Satan. 
men began to multiply on the earth, and daughters were born unto them. The sons of God take the daughters of men for themselves, and they bring forth giants, the, 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 the sons, and they bring forth giants, the Nephilim. Neth Maybe you are not convinced that there are fallen angels. Let the scriptures speak for themselves. And there we have three scriptures in Job. Job 1 verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came along uh, also among them. Job 2 verse 1. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. Job 38 verse 7. When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. So Satan continually just come to present himself. He just made sure that he's, he's got a finger in the pie so that he can stop the seed of God. We will deal with the giants a little bit later, but nevertheless, Satan has attacked again. This time, he penetrates the very seed of man. But we read down in verse 8 to 9 that the Lord still has a man, Noah. God is always looking for a man, Noah in this case. According to the Bible, he's just the perfect in his generations. He's perfect in his generations. Now I want to come and use the scripture and come and edify you and help you and assist you that we seek to stand out like a Noah in our time. God sees the wickedness of man and to preserve the seed, God sends a flat. Once again, the devil's arsenal is short of the redemptive hand of God. The devil's arsenal, arsenal short of the redemptive hand. God has got a plan. Then we go pick up the story of David and we go see the seed and again this fight between um, the devil, the enemy, Satan and the seed and we go pick it up with David. And we know, all know the familiar story of the little shepherd boy who marches in, in and defeats Goliath and when we were in Israel earlier this year, we were actually there at that little river, at the little mount where, where the, uh, the um, Slagorde in Afrikaans, where the, the, the battlefield was set, where um, uh, David defeated no, uh, um, Goliath. And uh, we were there. And uh, the Bible says that Goliath was a Philistine from Gath. The reason why this is interesting is because of what the Bible says about Gath. 2 Samuel 21, 21 verse 20. Yet again, there was a war at Gath where there was a man of great stature who had six fingers on each hand and six toes on each, each foot, 24 in number, and he also was born to be a giant, one of the Nephilim. We read that in 1 Chronic Chronicles 20 verse 6 as well. Yet again, there was war at Gath where there were a man of great stature with 24 fingers and toes, six on each hand and six on each foot, and he was born to be a giant. Here we read that there were some odd characters in Gath. Notice that the last phrase in these verses, he also was born to be a giant, and he also was the son of a giant. We also read about some giants being born to the sons of God in Genesis 6 verse 4. If you read through the Old Testament, you will find a group of people called Anakims. And these Anakims are mentioned in different scriptures. And I'm just going to mention the scriptures if you want to dot them down. And Anakims, these giants, are mentioned in Numbers 13, 33, Deuteronomy 1, verse 28, Deuteronomy 2, verse 10 to 11, and Deuteronomy 9, verse 2, as well as Joshua 11, verse 22. And I've prepared a beautiful slide with you with that on, which I'm not going to show to you because I couldn't <laughs> open it on my OneDrive, the one place where I should be able to open it. But here we are. Whether you want to believe that these are offspring from the fallen angels or not, you must also at least admit that they are different from normal people. Keep in mind also that the Bible speaks of enmity, feyanskap in, in Afrikaans, enmity, feyanskap, that struggle, that fight um, between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent, according to the scriptures, the serpent also has seed. The scene is set. We have the giant and we have David, the giant, the fallen angels, the seed of the fallen angels and David, godly seed. Satan once again is launching an attack. And if he can rid the world of David, the future king 
and the lineage of Christ will be destroyed. Hallelujah. The Lord prevails as David holds the stone. Oddly enough, gives the giant a mark on the forehead, which we read in Revelation 13, 16 about the mark of the beast on the forehead. Then in 1 Samuel 17, verse 20, 42 to 50. 1 Samuel 17, 42 to 50. And when the Philistines looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and good looking. So the Philistines said to David, Am I a dog that you came to me with, a, with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds in the air and of the beasts of the field. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin. But I came to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. Verse 46, this day the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Please continue reading till verse 50. I'm going to skip that part purely for time. But uh, the fight against the enemy the seed of the enemy and the seed of God. Once again, God prevails and Satan's still going to have his head bruised as promised. Remember the promise in Genesis 3.15. You will bruise your head. Something else very interesting is found in verse 46 when David says, I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air. So he will give them up. We read that also in Revelation 19 verse 17 to 18. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the birds that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather together for the supper of the great God, that you may eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses and of those who sit on them, and the flesh of all people, free and slave, both smart and great. Then we jump to Judas. So now we jump to the New Testament, we jump to Judas and uh, the religious leaders of the time. So the fight between the seed of God and the seed of the enemy. And we pick up the story in the New Testament where we see God in the flesh. Matthew 21 verse 33 to 39. Here another parable. There was a certain landowner who planted a vineyard and set a hedge around it, dug a winepress press in it and built a tower and um, he leased it to the uh, vine dressers and went into a far country. And then when he sent his slaves to go and look for it, they killed his slaves. And eventually, after sending a number of slaves that were killed, he decided to send his son because they will respect his son. And that's exactly the story of Jesus Christ. Because God said, I will send my son. And in this case, what did they do? The seed of the enemy killed the son of this uh, 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 vineyard owner, the land owner. They killed his son. And it's a, a direct lineage, direct line reference to Jesus Christ. And um, the land owner sent his son because he said, they will not kill my son. And they did, as the Jews killed Jesus Christ. Just like the land owner who only had good intentions with the wine dressers, God also sent his son. The Lord Jesus Christ, the fulfillment of Genesis 3.15 as he comes to the earth and thus set the scene for the battle to begin. The religious leaders of the day wanted to get rid of the Lord and on several occasions wanted to stone him. Why? The reasons why is because the Lord was exposing them as to who they were. Examples of where Jesus exposed religious leaders can be found in Matthew 12.34, Matthew 23.33, John 8, 44, and Matthew 23, 15. The religious leaders were not able to plot a major attack until one, one of the twelve, which was the devil, joined the scenario. So the religious leaders attacked, but they never had any effect until the, the attack came from the inside, one of the twelve. So we read that in Genesis 3, 15, a, de a, a dead God cannot bruise the head of anybody. So they crucified the Lord Jesus, but little did they know that there was the very will of God to bring the plan of salvation for every man 
stole, according to Genesis 3.15, I will bruise your head. Still stood for God. So then we read in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 7 to 8, but we speak the wisdom of God in a ministry, mystery, ministry, mystery, sorry, we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages of our glory, which none of the rulers of the age knew. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. The appearance to the wor world is that God has failed, but they do not see what is going on in the lower parts of the earth. Revelation 1 verse 18. I am ye who lives. God saying, I am ye who lives and was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. Can we see who's speaking here as God in Revelation 1.18? Jesus Christ. God as the Son, as Christ, as our Redeemer. Ephesians 4 verse 8 to 10. Therefore he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now this, he ascended, what does it mean but that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. The blessed Son of God goes into the lower parts of earth, takes the keys and bring those in paradise out. The devil thought he had uh, the Lord, but no grave can hold God. The victory appeared to be Satan's and Thor, the angels, comes and roll the stone away and the Savior of the world walks out. Hallelujah to the Lamb. He's alive forevermore and Satan has lost. Genesis 3.15 is still just as true as it was when it was spent. Satan is doomed and he can read in scriptures to find out his um, destination. We're busy landing. Revelation 20.10. The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the, where the beast and the false prophets are. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. The war has been won. And after the dust settles, there is only one left. His name is I Am, the Great I Am. Revelation 20, uh, Revelation 20, 11 to 15. Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for, for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and book, books were opened. And another book was opened, which, the book, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in it. And they were judged each according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And only not found written in the book of life was cast Every name, everyone, every name who was not found in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. The last comment, the war is over. No more devil for his followers. The Alpha and Omega, the Lord Jesus, still stands. And the Bible says that we must all give an account to him. Are you on the winning side? Or when the dust settles on your eternity, will you lift up your eyes, open your eyes, in hell, Luke 16. We should call on, on the Lord and get on the winning side. With God, we can win. Lord, we just come and we commit our lives to you tonight. Lord, every person in the sound of my voice who during this teaching had an unction in the spirit to correct something, had an unction in the spirit to call out to you, Lord. We come and we call that forth. We come and we bring that and we put it on the table of your heart, Lord. We say, Lord, Gracious God, God of love, help everyone to find your love. We pray for every person to find salvation. Supernaturally, Lord, send someone. Allow them to reach out. Press it upon their hearts to reach out because salvation is forever. I bless everyone in the sound of my voice with the love of God. And I send you forth to be the light in Jesus' name. Amen.